Hey everybody, thanks again for tuning into the Zim Geek channel, and if you're coming in from Indie Volt TV and Radio, who's really pumped my uh, viewership over the last couple of weeks, I really want to welcome you. I invite you to comment, like the video, and especially subscribe. I don't have enough subscribers, so thanks a lot. Hope you enjoy this. It's time for another adventure in cartooning. This is Cartooning 101E, Cartoon Character Dynamics. And don't forget our rules of cartooning. All you need is paper and pencil. Make sure that you draw light, because we'll do a lot of erasing. And most especially, don't get frustrated. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about cartoon character dynamics. We've gone through doing your outline, starting with the head, doing the body, drawing in the arms and the hands as circles, and then adding the fingers adding the features, adding the legs. So we got a guy standing there, but how do we make him move? Once you have this nailed down, once you're able to see that in your head and you're able to uh, draw it rather, rather quickly, rather easily, then you need to work on bending it animating it, making it more dynamic. The more dynamic you get it, the more relaxed that you get it, the uh, more fun you're going to have with it, the more fun your cartoons are going are gonna to have and look. The easier it is to turn it. Over-exaggerate it. And again, like I said before, over-exaggeration is really really your key to funny. It's that easy. Now, if you noticed what I did here on his hand, I did that back when we were on his arm, I should say. Back when we were doing hands, I did the same thing. That's what they call foreshortening, where you take that object, where you see that object, and you put, like, the forearm in front of the back part of the arm. If you look at a lot of artists... And a big one I use, I really love to uh, point out to, especially comic-wise when it's using basic shape, somebody who literally invented dynamics as far as superhero dynamics go. It's Jack Kirby. And you can go through and look at Kirby's work, and you can see how almost everything on Kirby's work is a basic shape. He doesn't just draw hands. He's got squared-off fingers. And everything is dynamic. Everything is po posed to be right in your face. That's part of the fun that he has had and developed over the years. The more you do this, the more of a, your own style is going to come through. The more your look is going to get refined. The more influences that you have, uh, the more uh, people that you look at for guidance, for direction, the... Uh, the more things you bring to the table, and the more life that you experience as well. Now that's also a key part to drawing, is getting up off of your butt every once in a while and going out someplace new and experiencing a little bit of life. Because you would be amazed what you're going to pull from that, e even subconsciously, as far as people relaxing, people sitting, people walking. It's very easy to do once you figure it out in your head. And the way to do that isn't always at the board, but it is primarily at the board. Where you can break down your body style even more. See that, that line there wasn't going in the right direction. I turned it around. Always putting one part of the body in front of the other, making it make sense. If it doesn't make sense, work it out. Work it out on the, on the board, on your sketch pad, whatever. And don't be afraid to try stuff and make those mistakes. Not everything you lay down is going to be perfect the first time through. Not even, no matter how old or how long you draw, you're still going to make that mistake. You see here, I get really sketchy when I, when I sit here and do my roughs. That's intentional. That gives me a variety of lines that I can choose. A different, whole different set of looks. If 
I want this guy to look muscular, the key is just to add more bulk. Make him look more muscular. And the way to know how to do that is by looking, it's by doing with your eye, seeing what looks right, what doesn't look right, and sitting here and working it out. Now, making it dynamic, again, like I mentioned, the real key to cartooning is over-exaggeration. Don't have him just walking, have him really walking. Don't have him running, have him really running. Over-exaggeration is the key and, and a big key to making things funny. Your ability to draw is key, not how realistic that you draw. It's how you draw that illustration into the person's mind. My style has always been very cartoony because I've always leaned on my favorite influences are people like C.C. Beck, Jack Cole, Jack Kirby, you know, a little bit of Will Eisner, especially when it comes to my inking. I'm not sure where I'm going with this illustration, but like I said, you have to sit there and you have to play. You just have to. Getting to know how muscles fit, how they look realistic. That's all a matter of you doing, researching, looking. Don't be afraid to look at whatever yourself in the mirror, doing different things, holding different things, wrapped up in different things, wearing different clothing. How much or how little of that is entirely up to you. and deciding for yourself what looks right, what doesn't look right. Don't ever be afraid to take a sketch pad out into public. You'll probably attract a little bit of attention, especially anymore, because everybody's so digital and they all work inside the computer. You'll have somebody come up, great conversation starter. Hey, what are you doing? Or, hey, do you mind if I draw your dog? <laughs> do it in a nice way though, not in a leery way. But sit there and draw, draw trees, draw uh, park benches. Draw fire hydrants. And you're never going to get better reference than by looking at it firsthand. And you're never going to get firsthand reference better than if you get up, go out, do things every once in a while, get yourself active. I feel that's a big thing I like to uh, tell all of my artists is to get up, go out, experience life every once in a while because you never know what you're going to find. You never know what's gonna, you're, what you're going to bring to the board. Don't be afraid to try new things. Try as many different things as possible. And if you're going to draw comics, you really need to know how to draw everything. That includes everything from trees to uh, horses to animals. I've never drawn more trees or animals than I have in the last four or five years, but that's because I have a major client that is a nature preserve. And so I've created a team of superheroes for them that deals with nature and conservation. That took a little bit of research. That took a lot of thinking. But now I've got them down to where I can easily draw them nearly any way that I need to pretty well right off the bat. This character is called the frog. Made to be simple. Made to be quick. And unmistakably a frog. You see, I get real sketchy here in my pencil work so I can go through and choose what lines work the best or maybe none of them work the best but I can see them in my head and decide for myself when I get to the point where I'm inking 
as to what looks good, what doesn't look good. And there's always a way to bring dynamics to your drawing, always a way to over-exaggerate it. Don't ever be afraid to play around with that. Don't, don't ever be afraid to think, well, is this going to work, or would this work better if I do this? Because most of the time, when you start thinking, would this work better if I did this, your second choice is usually better than your first. And knowing what works for you is what makes the artist in you come out. Future classes, maybe I'll uh, do a recording or two on the work that I'm currently working on, the next uh, superhero trail. I still have yet to do a video on that, introducing that. to my uh, YouTube audience, but it is a lot of fun. It's very rewarding. I'm right in the middle of that project now, which is why I haven't been able to do a lot of uh, videos lately. That, and I kicked out another issue of the paper. You can go back to video number five to learn more about that. There we are. It's kind of him, uh, the frog, leaning on a rock, or I can have him leaning on a toadstool, or anything. 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 Drawing characters dynamically, it's entirely your choice. Take the normal uh, action and exaggerate it. Make it more dynamic. Take a look at people who do this incredibly well. If you're going to draw comics, I would recommend, even if your style is very serious, looking at the crazy uh, stylistic guys like Frank Robbins and C.C. Beck and especially Jack Kirby if you're going to draw superheroes, even if you have a more realistic style to your work. And keep working it out. The real key to learning dynamics and doing dynamics is to sit there and just do it. Just do it. Just like the silly Nike ad. Sorry, there goes my sub pump again. I'm sure you're, you're hearing it. I'm set up right next to it. But anyway, the more you do, the better you get, the better you get. The more you're going to refine down to your style. Whole forest there, just a shaky line. Whole tall grass. side of the pond. Not everything you do is going to be 100%. Most of the time you're going to look back, part of being an artist, seriously, is looking back on your stuff six months to a year from now and going, oh man, I could have done that a lot better. You'll get to a point where you say that less and less. That just means you're getting, you are getting better. You're being more professional. And you're working good at it. All right? I think that's it for dynamics. If you have any questions, please feel free to put a comment down below. If you like this video, please like. Hit the thumbs up. Ring the bell for notifications. I've been trying really hard to get through my work so I can put more of these videos up. And will shortly. I've been doing a lot, a lot of research in that Captain Marvel stuff. It's been very, just crazy interesting for me. It's been a lot of fun. Just like doing all of these videos are so much fun. And as you see there, made a mistake with the eyes. I'm going through and patching that up, making it look better. All right, have fun. Play with your cartooning. Next uh, video I do, we're going to start doing figures. We're going to start doing characters that you know. We're going to use everything that we've used so far that we've talked about, doing outlines, filling in details, using circles for the hands. And we're going to go through and draw some of these figures and you'll see how easy it is, how very easy it is to cartoon. So next time it's Captain Marvel. The time after that we'll start doing those characters. And until next time, 
Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Like, subscribe, comment. Talk to you soon. Take care.